<laughs> did you record that? You know, I'm always like, I forgot. So I remember today to record. So guys, on this session tonight, we are going to be talking about beating the banks with cryptocurrency. Beating the bank with cryptocurrency. So the first thing that I'm going to say before we actually get into this lesson, I want you guys to understand, okay, I am a student just like you. I am a member of this academy, just like you. So the number one way to get the best information about how to make money with your cryptocurrency is to get onto the live sessions with our master traders, Curtis Cobain Branch, who a lot of you guys got to meet this past weekend in, in Atlanta, is one of the best crypto educators in the world. You guys have access to be able to learn with him every single week. Crypto Picasso was noted as one of the best Bitcoin traders and investors in the world before he ever came to this academy. All right. I actually remember two years ago, the first time I got onto one of his things, <laughs> one of his calls um, in the DCX Academy. And he was like, yeah, this whole, you know, network marketing thing, you guys inviting people. I mean, I, I guess I kind of get it, but really this is what you should be doing, guys. You should be focused. <laughs> like he was, <laughs> you know, I think now he's kind of changed his tune a bit, but he was totally like this, like network marketing is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Crypto, this is what you guys should be uh, doing. And so anyway, I say all that to say he was doing this guys long before this company ever came along. And he was one of the people that Christopher Terry reached out to and said, hey, I'm looking for the best. You are the best. I need to have you mentor my students, okay? And so just know, guy, Nick Gomez was just uh, interviewed on MSN a couple of months ago, okay? So just know what I'm gonna be talking about tonight is kind of give, to give kind of a general overview just so that you guys understand what crypto staking is and other ways that you can make money in crypto other than trading. Because me personally, I like trading Forex. I like trading high frequency. I do not like trading um, crypto because it is so volatile. I love, however, investing in crypto and creating passive income with crypto. And so what we're going to talk about tonight is another way of basically creating uh, passive income streams using your cryptocurrency. All right. So those of you guys who are like, I don't really like trading, but I love investing. This is for you. Um, I know also that we do have some crypto queens and some crypto kings on the line. Come on, lady queen. Come on, CJ <laughs> from Charlotte. Okay. So if you guys at the end, as I'm going through this, if you guys see something that you're like, oh, she should have said that, or I wish she would have mentioned that as well, please write that down. And at the end, I'll open it up. And if you guys want to add anything to this conversation, um, we'll, we'll let you have an opportunity to speak. Okay. All right, great. <clears throat> so what I want to um, do is just kind of, let's kind of start with a basic overview and understanding. Okay. So why is crypto staking important? Why do we need to understand what this is? Okay. So in order to understand why crypto staking is so important at this time, we got to first go back and start looking at how the banks make money. So most of you guys know this information. We talk about it all the time on our presentations, right? Banks make money, how? By loaning your money to other people, right? If Amber needs a car loan, uh, the bank is going to take Lady Queen's money, Gail's money, Ruthann's money, pay that all together to pay the car company for Amber. And then Amber is going to pay the bank back with interest, right? So they're using your money to make money. They're charging Amber the interest, but you don't get any out of that. All right. They also are charging you through checking account fees. They also charge you through overdraft fees. Did you guys see last year that Bank of America got sued? Okay. Because of all the overdraft fees that they were calling. And I know for me, especially, especially I was really bad at checking my bank account in my twenties, honey. So there have been plenty of times when I bought one candy board that cost me a hundred dollars because them overdraft fees just kept rolling. What? How did that happen? Right. And this bank that's using your money to make money off of your money, okay, is charging you even more money just because you made a, a, a small mistake, right? And so, and also we know that they put our money in the foreign exchange money market and they're making money off of it, right? So what does crypto offer that's different, okay? With staking, okay, crypto offers you the ability to earn interest on your money at a higher rate than any bank, Okay, the lowest crypto staking interest rates are higher than the highest bank account savings rates. Everybody caught that. 
All right. So you really want to understand that peer to peer, okay, is a better way of actually doing money, which is the, the reason why people are super excited about it. Okay. So you can stake your uh, crypto, which basically means it's in an interest bearing wallet, kind of like a savings account, right? And you're earning money off of your uh, money being held on that exchange. You also have the ability to lend your coins to other people and receive interest. What does that sound like? Sounds just like what the bank was doing, except now you get an opportunity to be able to have a part of that. All right. I'm going to show you guys a quick example, just a quick example, and we'll come back to it. Just give me one second. All right. Try to be like Curtis here. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Hold on one second. All right, here we go. So this is a, an example. This is Ave, is it pronounced Ave guys, A-A-V-E.com. But this is one of the places, right, that we can hold our crypto. And so for example, let's say that, uh, let's just say uh, USD coin, right? Let's say that you wanted to lend out um, USD coin. Well, right now, they're actually allowing people to borrow USD coin at 3.48%, okay? Now, the person who owns that coins, who's lending it out, right? What are you getting paid back in return? 2.5%, all right? So obviously the exchange is gonna take the rest of that. But if your money was sitting in your checking account, guess how much you would earn off of somebody else borrowing your money? Zero, okay? Zero. So they're basically saying, okay, so that $2,000 you would put in your bank, if you put it into... Um, if you put it in here and loan it out as a USD coin, this is what we're offering you. You're loaning it out as a Gemini dollar, um, putting into Gemini dollar, loaning it out 4.96%, okay? So you have the ability to loan your cryptocurrency and actually create an interest on it, just like the bank. Now, this is how we're starting to be like the banks, okay? <clears throat> you can also swap your um, coins and make, can you guys see my screen? Okay, thanks. Um, you can sw um, swap it, okay, and earn money that way. I'll go through that in this presentation, okay? And then um, you can also invest it to receive a great AYP, okay? And I'm gonna go through what all these terms mean as we kind of get into this conversation, all right? All right, so here's a few terms that you wanna understand when it comes to staking and earning interest on your, um, your money okay so staking just basically means it's an interest bearing wallet it's a way to create passive income on your crypto now we all know you're going to make more money trading all right but again passive means what you're not doing anything it's just sitting there you're not monitoring your trade you're not having to get into a trade you know even though you would make more so it may be a little bit less on the return side but again remember what's your lifestyle what is it that you're trying to really do so, because for me right now, everything that I'm trying to do is about passive income. Your APY is your annual percentage yield. So it's kind of very much the same of like, you know, your savings account, right? So when you're looking at what is it that you're going to put your money in or which exchange you're going to put your money in, one of the things you want to look at is what's that percentage that they're going to pay you back for holding your money. So obviously, the higher the percentage rate, you know, the better because you're gonna actually earn more on your money. Uh-oh, there we go. All right, locked staking. What locked staking means is, so when you go to certain um, sites, and we'll kind of take a look at a couple of them, okay? Um, when you go to certain sites, they'll show that, hey, you can stake your coins here, but it's locked versus being flexible. So let's look at what the difference is. So locked staking means that they're gonna hold your coins for a certain amount of time, anywhere usually from 30 days to 90 days. I even saw, I think it was on Binance where they had locking for 15 days. So basically what that means is in that period, so if you're saying I'm going to lock my coins <clears throat> for 30 days, in that 30 day period, you don't have the ability to withdraw. You don't have the ability to trade it. You don't have to, the ability to move it around. Most of us who are investing in crypto, it's long-term anyway. So what difference would it make? right? Like I would have no problem doing a 90 day lock and I get a higher interest rate back um, on my money because I wasn't going to plan on moving it anyway, right? 
So flexible basically is the opposite, right? That means that your coins can be withdrawn at any time, all right? That percentage though, the, that um, APY is usually going to be slightly lower. Why? Because now you have more flexibility with your coins. <clears throat> Okay, so running nodes, sometimes we'll hear that term. This is another way that you can earn passive income. And that's basically you're running nodes on the blockchain. And because the blockchain is actually either burning coins or um, creating new coins or solving problems on the blockchain, you'll actually be able to earn income off of that. You get staking rewards. So what I want you to kind of think of, because I had a hard time kind of understanding that, excuse me, I want you to think of um, like Bitcoin mining, all right? Bitcoin mining, the actual mining is what gives you the rewards, all right? So we are gonna talk about a couple of different exchanges and you'll see CFI and you'll see DeFi. CFI is a centralized exchange, right? You don't own the coins on that exchange, <clears throat> which means, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't, <laughs> you don't have ownership on that exchange, it doesn't mean that you can't move things around, but it, what it does mean is, is that you don't have it in a secure wallet uh, that, where you get ownership, right? Now, some of the good things about CFI is that some of them have insurance. When we get into the DeFi wallets, we'll talk about hot wallets and cold wallets and all that kind of stuff. But you guys know, like if you were to lose your ledger, like your, your, your nano ledger, right? unless you remember your 12 word password, your crypto is gone. Whereas on some of the centralized exchanges, some of them have insurance. So that if something were to happen where you got hacked or something like that, where they'll actually give you back your coin. So it's just something to think about, okay? As we're going through this, I want you to, you know, obviously guys, this is your money, this is your investments. So I want you to start thinking in terms of like, okay, so what is it that I want to do when you're thinking about which exchange you're going to choose to use? <clears throat> All right. So DeFi is decentralized. Okay. Which means, so centralized also means that the government can see it. That means that um, this is actually run by like a company decentralized. You have full ownership and control. Usually there are lower fees, um, but just know that it is complete ownership. All right. Uh, hot wallets are generally going to be like computer software. For example, Exodus is on my computer. So when I put my coins into Exodus, they, it lives on my computer, right? Um, it is also decentralized. It is free usually. I don't think that there are any hot wallets where you have to pay. Most of them are free. And if you are paying for one, just go you Exodus because that one's free. A cold wallet is usually guys like a nano ledger, which is kind of like a USB stick it's a lot harder to hack. So that gives you more protection, all right? But don't ever lose your 12 word phrase. If you ever lose your 12 word phrase, again, you've lost your, um, your crypto, all right? So just something to, to think about as you're looking at protecting your crypto and where to get your crypto. So let's just kind of, let's just kind of put this into perspective, right? Of what it is that we're actually don't, doing here. So when you purchase your crypto, on your CFI exchange, you choose a wallet that you're going to put your crypto in. So how many of you have bought Bitcoin on Binance or uh, Coinbase or any of the other exchanges out there? You bought your crypto and what did you do? You moved it to a wallet. All right. The next thing that we're looking at, uh, just remember that different cryptos can be staked, pooled or lent and the interest rates are going to be different, which I'll go through in a bit. All right. So once you decide which exchange you're gonna purchase your crypto on and which wallet you're gonna use, you're gonna decide if you wanna stake it, lend it, or pull it, okay? And so again, it, it varies based on which exchange you're using and also which crypto. Because for example, you really can't stake Bitcoin. We'll kind of get into that. There's some that you can stake. Um, for example, if you're doing Polkadot, for example, people like to swap Polkadot. I'll explain what each of those means. So just know that you, I just want you guys to understand that different cryptocurrencies, you have the ability to do different things when it comes to creating interest on that crypto. Am I being clear? Give me some nods if I'm, if I'm being clear. <laughs> awesome. All right. So remember our goal, the goal for the team, you know, so Curtis wants each of us to have at least $100,000 in our crypto accounts, right? He wants our accounts to grow to 100K. 
And ultimately what we wanna to get to a point of is where we are living off of the interest alone. That's it. We put our money in and we live off of the interest, not the principal, yes. And so tonight um, I'm gonna go through the main ones that most of us have because clearly there's 6,000 cryptocurrencies. So we could be here all day talking about all of them but I'm just gonna go through the main ones. If you, if you have cryptocurrency and you're interested in staking your cryptocurrency but we don't discuss it tonight, you can go to stakingrewards.com and it's gonna show all the coins that can be staked and then also where you can stake them. And then there you can be able to find out if you can lend it if you can stake it or if you can pull it. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at some of these cryptos, okay? So Bitcoin, for example, guys, cannot be staked, but you can still earn it, earn Bitcoin passively on some sites, okay? It can be mined for passive income. It can be lent for traders. And it can also, you can also create income by funding of fees, all right? Um, you can use, you can do this on BlockFi, Celsius Wallet, Binance, and Qcoin are some of the places where you can earn passive income on your Bitcoin. Polkadot, all right, can be staked, all right? People talk a lot about Polkadot and how much income they're creating just by staking Polkadot alone, all right? Just know that when you stake in the pools, um, it does have diminishing return, which basically means the bigger stake in that pool, the more shares, if you will, of that pool that you have, the lower your returns will be. So you wanna be pay attention that you're not getting into a pool that's too big. You wanna make sure that you're joining some of the smaller pools. And if you're like completely like, I have no idea what she means when she's talking about pool, I need you guys to go through the Digital Currency Academy, okay? Go back through the Digital Currency Academy or get on with Curtis Cobain and it's going to really explain that. Just think about a pool, right? And you're putting your crypto in with other people's crypto, all right? And that's the pool. And then people can borrow from that pool. And your crypto is creating the liquidity in that pool, all right? Uh, the larger the pool gets, though, the lower the returns that each person gets back. Make sense? The smaller, the better. All right, so Polkadot also usually on sites, Polkadot usually offers the best interest rate when it comes to staking. Some sites give you up to 13% on Polkadot, like it's awesome. Um, you can do this on Qcoin. You can also do this on Kraken. Um, you can also do a Polkadot wallet that I just learned about um, on Polkadot.js. And then you can also do pancake swap they offer very very high interest rates for swapping polka dot all right so let me Tammy, i think somebody asked could you go back to the bitcoin screen the bitcoin screen yes one second if i can get my thing to move there we go thank you shamika all right we ready to rock and roll all right, cool. Tammy, can you go back one to basics? Your screen would, yes. yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. We're, we're, uh, we're dog sitting for the week. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a noise maker. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. No, you're welcome. So the big thing on this screen is just know that just if you guys go to stakingrewards.com, it'll show you where everything can be staked. Okay. And where. All right. All right. Excellent. Yeah, my buttons won't work. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, let's talk about Cardano. This is another favorite one, right? Cardano can definitely be staked. Um, it can also be invested in those pools that I was telling you about. Same exact thing, guys. The bigger the pool, the lower your return. So you want to make sure that um, when you're looking at getting into pools, the smaller, the better. You can also go to cardano.org and that will show you how you can stake your pool or how you can even start your own pool. Okay, um, you can stake and use Cardano on uh, Binance, Kraken, uh, Exodus, Wallet, you know, my wallet. <laughs> I use Binance, actually I have all three of these, but primarily I use Exodus and Binance. Um, 
around 5%. When you look at the different sites, about 5% is what you're going to see when it comes to staking rewards on your money. Okay. Uh, you may have to lock it though for a period of time. But again, if you're look, doing your crypto for long-term investments, what difference does it make if it's locked for 90 days? Right. Um, they, I have not used these, but I have heard that your, I think it's your, your Rui, or dataless wallet. Again, I have not used them, but I heard that there's no locking period on that. So if you're like, I want access all the time, those might be the ones that you wanna take a look at. All right, everybody took a screenshot. Awesome. All right, Ethereum, one of our favorites. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. Just like Bitcoin, regular Ethereum cannot be staked. Okay. However, you can stake uh, Ethereum to Ethereum 2.0. Okay. Ethereum 2.0 can be staked. Um, you can also um, on Binance and Kraken, you can also delegate your coins. All right, which means that you can uh, basically allow them to use your coins for other things and, and therefore create interest off of it. Celsius, you have the ability to lend out your coins, uh, just like what I was showing you before. Um, and generally around four to 20% interest is what you're gonna get depending upon the site that you use to stake your Ethereum 2.0. All right, let's go into stable coins real quick, okay? So we went through the, the four main ones that most of you guys have and are currently trying to stake and things like that. Now, here's something that's great for beginners, okay? With stable coins. So you guys know stable coins are basically, they kind of mirror um, the US dollar, right? So if you get one coin, excuse me, gosh, of a stable coin, it's the equivalent basically of one US dollar. These are going to hold their value the same. Um, how do I say that? These are not going to be as volatile. Okay. So you know how one day Bitcoin can be at one price and the next day it's down 30% or up 40%. And you're like, ah, <laughs> right. These pretty much, they're going to stay pretty safe, um, stable. By the way, here's another uh, little tip for those of you guys who are funding your um, trading accounts. If you are nervous about funding your account with Bitcoin because of the fact that it moves so fast, because literally you can try to fund your trading account with $100, okay? And if you wait till the next day, Bitcoin might be down to, your account might be down to $70 because it's in Bitcoin. However, if you were to put it in something like USDC, uh, for example, that $100 is gonna stay pretty much $100, okay? So if you're transferring money, I would probably use a stable coin instead of using Bitcoin because it is so volatile. Just another side note, okay? So basically, when you're using your stable coins in cryptocurrency, this is basically like investing US dollars, okay? So if you are a beginner person and you're like, I'm really nervous about cryptocurrency um, and maybe I have a large savings account that's just not making any money at all, then maybe what you want to consider is putting your money into a stable coin, right? And earning interest on it <clears throat> because you have good lending potential there. So let me just show you real quick. I'm just going to go back to, um, I'm just going to pull up one of my screens that I found. Y'all, oh, man, my computer buttons are just like not working. What is going on? Hold on. Give me a second. Here we go. All right, so even if we went back to AV, okay, right? So if we're looking at Tether or if we're looking at the USD coin, all right, you're looking at if somebody wants to borrow, they're going to borrow it at 3.84% and you're going to be able to lend it for 3%. You're going to get 3% back on um, that money, all right? Um, if we're also looking at, give me a second, guys. Pull up. Uh, was it this one? Yeah. So e this is Binance right here that we're looking at right now. So you'll see um, you have the ability to earn, you know, 1.20%. You're probably like, okay, well, 1%, that's not a lot of money, but it's probably better than that savings account you got all that money in. That's not earning you anything. And it's flexible. So you can pull that money out whenever you want to, right? Um, 
And if you look at like, for example, BNB, is that um, a stable coin? I can't remember, but this one is given up to 10%, all right, for staking your coins there. But look at it, it's locked. So you got to hold it for 30 days, but you're going to get 10% interest on it. That's pretty cool if you ask me, you know? And so you'll even see here on Binance, it says stable coins are predictable returns for crypto tem temporarily locked up. New to crypto, this is where you should start, okay? So this might be really good for those of you guys who are not in DC in the DCX Academy. So you don't really know which cryptos to put your money into. You may wanna go ahead and start with like a, um, a stable coin and that's gonna give you steady, easy returns. Okay, let me go back to my slides, okay? Awesome. All right. All right, so now let's talk about DEX or decentralized exchanges for direct swaps. Now, this is the one that I'm the least familiar with, okay? So bear with me on this, okay? Again, please go into our DCX Academy and um, they have great training on swapping, pancake swap, all of that, okay? But I'm just gonna kind of go over the basics, okay? So- Pammy, Pammy, Pammy. Yes. Before yes. you go into that, um, how, what's the minimum amount for the stable coins that you can um, invest? It would vary per site. So you would have to go, depending on the site that you're going to, there's gonna always be, you know, differing deposits. Mm. So that's kind of why I'm showing you guys the different sites. And I'll, at the end, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I have a, a list of like the different exchanges as well so that you guys can go on for yourself and decide like, okay, this is who I wanna use. Okay. Awesome. All right, so when we're doing um, trading on our centralized sites, right? You guys know in order for you to put in a buy or a sell, there has to be somebody that you're matched up with, okay? So in order for you to put a buy, even though you don't see it on your platform, there has to be somebody selling so that there can be an actual trade. That's what trading is, right? Um, some of you, your brokers, I know I've talked to some of you guys where you're like, Hey, I tried to put in a trade and the broker said it gave you some kind of error. Like, like basically you don't have a seller who's trying to do that. <laughs> so you couldn't put in your trade. That's what that means. Okay. So with a decentralized exchange, you, it's really not like this. Anyone with coins can put their point, their coins into that pool. All right. So the people who are swapping coins, right? They pay a fee to the exchange, to the decentralized exchange in order to swap their coins. So the coins that you're putting in and you're like, hey, I'm gonna stake it or I just wanna get interest off of my coins. I'm not trading it. I just wanna um, put it in there. That is what creates the liquidity so that they can trade in the markets. So you guys know that when you're trading and on your MetaTrader 4, this is Forex. So those of you high frequency, you might, not know what I'm talking about, but in Forex, it'll actually show you your margin. It'll sh show you the liquidity in the market. Even when you're trading and you're looking at different screens, you'll be able to see the liquidity in the market. All right. You'll hear the trader, the master traders talking about liquidity. That's what they're talking about. Okay. So your coins then give liquidity into the market. All right. And so what that does is it gives you the opportunity to create income or interest, right? To create income from the fees that other people pay. So again, let's go back to our first slide. How do banks make money? Loaning out to other people. We already showed you how you can do that in crypto, all right? They also make a lot of money off of charging you fees. Well, the exchange rate charges you fees, excuse me, the exchanges charge fees also, right? For you to guys to get on there and purchase your crypto and all that. What they're basically doing is giving you an opportunity to make money off of the fees that other people are paying. That's how that works. All right. So the, the income that other people are paying to be able to swap their trades because you have your, because, Lord, the fees that people are paying to be able to swap their coins all right, you get an opportunity to make income 
for having your coins sitting in that pool, creating liquidity so that they can uh, trade. All right. So the fees can be around uh, 0.25% to 0.3%. Again, not, you know, crazy, but I'm going to show you some that are just like insane, right? Uh, Pancake Swap, for example, is a decentralized exchange. So let me just show you Pancake Swap real quick. <clears throat> I need to stop with this Coca Cola. <laughs> All right. Pancake. I think I already had it. There we go. All right, so this is pancake swap. So this is what I'm talking about. People are putting their money into the different pools and you have the ability to make. So look at let's look at the APYs on this. What does that say? 93%. <laughs> Who wants to make 93%? All right, That's crazy. 67%, 83%, <laughs> okay, for creating liquidity in the market. So when you go to these, it'll give you more information about what the different projects are and all that kind of stuff. You would need to connect your wallet to be able to do this, okay? But all of you guys have wallets. So um, take a look at it. Take a look at it, all right? Okay, so that is DEX. All right, give me one second, guys, while I change screens again. All right, <clears throat> cool. All right, so now let's talk about um, the different sites, okay? All right, so we all know Celsius, right? Love Celsius. So on Celsius, guys, on this exchange, you have the ability to lend out your coins so you can make money lending, all right? It's also really good for beginners. Like the site is super easy to use. Um, you can earn passive income on Bitcoin and they have steady rates on stable coins. For those of you who are like, hey, I, I think I wanna do, you know, stable coins. You know, I wanna get some interest off of that. BlockFi is, a, is another exchange that you guys can use. You can lend Bitcoin, you can lend um, Ethereum. You can also lend stable coins on BlockFi. Um, they pretty much have really good rates of return. You can also earn uh, passive income on Bitcoin. This is why I like BlockFi, okay? And I might be about to use them because I actually didn't know this until I started doing research on this. All right, you actually get two transfers, two free transfers a month, no fees. <laughs> all right that was cool for me all right they do have crypto backed loans and crypto backed credit cards on their site um and if you sign up with BlockFi um to be your um oh god I'm losing my I can't think of my words guys if you sign up for BlockFi they offer a deposit bonus and I think a lot of these if you look most of them will have some kind of a deposit bo um bonus also, if you know somebody on the team who's already doing digital, ask them, hey, does your um, exchange offer like um, an affiliate link? Because usually what will happen is, let's say if Shamika sends me her affiliate link, she'll get $10, I get $10. Um, all right, and both of y'all can. Whatever that is, can you mute your phone, please? <laughs> Whoever's on the phone. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Binance. What this is? I use Binance and I use Binance.us as well. Okay, um, so it's it's very easy to use. Um, they do have the authentic authentic authenticator apps. Okay, that you have to use with this. And guys, I know for me it, it can be very frustrating when you're like, oh my gosh, I got to submit my driver's license, I got to submit this, I got to do the authentic. Like, oh, it's so much uh, protection. But remember, guys, it's like a bank account. You don't want to be just opening up stuff and putting your money into stuff and you don't have, they didn't make you prove that you are who you are. Okay. So I know sometimes it's frustrating trying to open up uh, different accounts on these exchanges, but you really have to listen, think about it the same way. This is the same way as if you walked into Bank of America and you're putting money in, they're not going to let you do that without um, a driver's license or something proving that you are who you say that you are. Okay. So that's the only thing about Binance, but um they do have Binance Earn, which I was showing you 
um, just a few moments ago. The only thing is they don't do really good with Bitcoin. So you want to do like maybe Celsius with Bitcoin. Um, I wouldn't do uh, Bitcoin on Binance. I do other cryptos. You can lend, trade, swap. You can do all of that in one place. They do offer flexible staking, which I just showed you guys. Um, and then they have this new thing called um, Launchpad and Launch Pool, which you can, where you can earn rewards on small alternative coins, okay? Um, crypto.com, that's supposed to say .com. I don't know where that extra P came from, but crypto.com, you guys know, is one of our favorites, okay? They do offer cash back up to 8% when you're using their... Um, their debit card. Um, I'll actually pull up crypto.com real quick uh, because it is one of the ones that I know Curtis really uh, recommends that you guys use as well. Give me one second. All right, so um, here we go. Awesome. All right, so when you start looking at um, all the things that they offer. Now, granted, obviously, the more you have in there, the more you know benefits you get, but you even get, hang on one second. There we go. All right, so you can get up to 8% in rewards. And remember when they reward you guys, they reward you in crypto. So, um, and then you, you know, withdraw that and all that, but you get a hundred percent back on Spotify. Like I know I would love to get that $16 back every month. Netflix, that's another $16. I would love to get back every single month. Amazon prime. That's another $12 that I actually need to cancel my prime. Cause I don't use it at all, but listen, all of these places I use Airbnb Expedia. I use all of these places and it would be great to be able to get these amazing discounts just for putting my crypto with them. Okay. Um, so they offer lots of great rewards for being a part of their platform. Um, what was I going to show you guys on this page? One second. And just know that if you do use their debit card, there's zero fees for the first 30 days. Um, and you do get on that card, you can do withdrawals. Hold on. Where was it? There we go. Depending on top, upon the type of card you have, it tells you um, how many free withdrawals you get from the ATM every single month. Okay. So it's something that you definitely want to go take a look at for yourself. Um, we really love crypto.com. Okay. And then I want to apologize guys, because I had every intention of really sitting down and going through our next site, because it is one that we have all been encouraged to use, I'm excited about using, and that is the Black Wall Street app, all right? We are buying Black when we buy our crypto, all right? But I apologize because I was traveling and um, I just did not get a chance to really sit down and do the research like I needed. All the others, like I said, I've used them before and things like that, so it was a little bit easier. Um, but I will go through and really kind of do a deep dive into the Black Wall Street app. And I'm sure Curtis will be too. I actually had a conversation with him after we had our one-on-one -on -one with Hill Harper. It was awesome. And Curtis was like, yo, I'm about to change everything. I was like, well, for real. So um, I think you guys are going to be hearing a lot more about the Black Wall Street app. Here are a couple of things that I do know that is the only Black-owned exchange. All right. It is the only black owned exchange. You guys will probably notice that there's a very popular exchange that I did not talk about tonight. And that is Coinbase. And one of the reasons why I didn't, if you were at the Atlanta event, I don't know if they said this in the big session or when they did like the private session with us. Um, but one of the things Mr. Harper was saying was that um, the black uh, employees of Coinbase was basically suing the CEO and the management because of how racist they were to the black employees, okay? And so this is what we're not gonna do is give our money to racist people anymore. So we're not gonna talk about Coinbase anymore, all right? I'm not gonna talk about Coinbase anymore. So if there's any other place where you can buy your cryptocurrency, buy it other than cryptocurrency, uh, buy, buy it other than Coinbase, preferably the Black Wall Street app, all right? Also, what I do know is that they do offer the best price for purchasing Bitcoin. And I know for most of you guys, Bitcoin is kind of the first thing that everybody starts to invest in. So if you're going to buy your Bitcoin, buy it on the Black Wall Street app. Okay. Um, so I was hoping, guys, that that would give you kind of, of a great overview. Um, I know it's like a lot of information, but I kind of just wanted to touch 
the basis of what it is when it means to stake, okay? Um, so when you're talking about after you've purchased or lent or whatever, just remember guys, your wallets, most of those staking, most of those exchanges in order to stake, you're just gonna go ahead and connect it with your wallet. And the wallets guys that we recommend, of course, are Exodus, MetaMask, Trust Wallet, for the coin only. Just remember also, um, your, your wallets don't actually hold your coins. They actually hold the access to your coins. Your coins are actually on the blockchain, guys. So just in case you're like, because I know for me, one of the reasons why I was using Exodus instead of getting a Nano was because I was like, I'm gonna lose that little thing. <laughs> I was like, listen, listen, a thumb drive? You want to be able to put all my money on a thumb drive? Are you crazy? I don't know what half the stuff is now. You, I had to, I was right before this call, I was asking my husband, where is my makeup bag? I can't find my makeup bag. And you want me to put my money on this little thing? So, um, but then, you know, just, you know, listening to the traders and listening to the, ma the master traders and helping them really helping me to understand that it's, that's not holding your money that's actually the access to your money so if you were to lose that guys as long as you have your 12 phrase your 12 point phrase you would still be able to uh get that back all right um any basic questions let me see how we're doing on time oh 10 minutes um hey, any tammy. basic questions basic hey tammy i got one quick statement i'm fixing to jump out and get some fuel but at nine o'clock tonight, Curtis is going to be um, talking about the Black Wall Street. He said he was going to try to do it tonight because he was doing his research this past week. So he was going to try to let us know something on it tonight at nine. Just excellent. a heads up. Thank you. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So yes, nine o'clock. So that's in 10 minutes. If you guys want to go on to Curtis's session and get more of this amazing information, he's really the go-to.